I didn't play a whole lot of sports as a kid, but I have a lot of fond memories of bowling. I remember rolling it across the pirate ship and trying not to roll it into the waters below. I remember throwing it down the streets of Tokyo and trying not to hit cars. And I especially remember rolling it into sunflowers and launching it into the skies of Rome. <laughs> okay, these may not be things you can do in your average game of bowling. However, they are all very much possible in the game Hyper Bowl. That sounds a lot cooler than your average game, doesn't it? Hyper Bowl Plus Edition was created in 2001 by a company called Hyper Entertainment. It was included as part of a Microsoft Plus Pack, an enhancement product that contained numerous features for old Windows computers. Like I said, the full title of this game is actually Hyper Bowl Plus Edition. You may be wondering, if it's an edition, there must be more than one version, right? That would be correct. Originally, Sony Development introduced Hyper Bowl in their Californian shopping center, the Metreon. Players would use a trackball to control the bowling ball, which worked really well for the format. In the game, players actually controlled the ball and tried to navigate it through obstacles to hit pins at the end of a stage. Stages would put them in different environments that were much different from your average bowling alley. One of these environments happened to be San Francisco, the city the Metreon is in. Thanks to Microsoft Plus, many people were able to play Hyper Bowl on their computers in the early 2000s. It went down in 2007 following the release of Windows Vista. However, this would not be the end of the adventurous little bowling game. Unlike other nostalgic games that were lost to time like Mango Plumo or Slider, there's actually been an effort to not only preserve Hyper Bowl, but to actually expand on it as well. The current developers, Technicat, are active and dedicated to expanding the legacy of Hyper Bowl. The classic stages remain intact, but new stages have been added in a completely different menu. This is actually remarkable because they managed to expand on the game without impeding on the aspects people are nostalgic for. Video game developers, please take notes from these guys. The game can be bought on Steam for 99 cents or itch.io for a name your own price. Links are in the description. Now let's take a look for ourselves. Before we get started, I just want to say I have no idea if the title is supposed to be a pun on Hyperbole or not. Starting off, the game retains a very arcade-like format. You have to click the buttons at the bottom of the screen in order to progress through the menus. You can choose to play single player or multiplayer. The stages are the same, you just switch off between players. You can set your name to something and then you're in the game. Right away, we need to mention two things. One, your ball is different every time you start the game up. Some of the designs can be really cool. Two, while you can use the mouse to play, you really shouldn't. The mechanics don't translate well to modern technology, but the WASD keys work just fine, so it isn't game-breaking. The menu is interesting because it actually times you to choose your stage. Ever hear of a game that did that? Probably so you don't take up too much time in the arcade. This area actually resembles a regular bowling alley. At the farthest right end, you can go to a new area that holds all the new stages, but for now, let's focus on the classic ones. There's no music in this game, just the ambient sounds of the ball rolling and the occasional jeers from a crowd when you get a gutter or a strike. I kind of like it. It really puts you in the mood of the ball. There's nothing more for you to do in life than to roll. The first stage, classic, is just that. Classic. Listed as a novice stage, the classic level puts you in a nice outdoor setting with Mars in the background. It's a simple game of bowling, nothing to it. You really have to appreciate the style of these graphics. They just scream early 2000s arcade game. You could feel nostalgic for this even if you've never played it before. The retro look adds to the experience. The next level, San Francisco, is where it gets interesting. You're going up and down hills in the streets of San Francisco trying to avoid trolleys. I also like how those signs in the beginning just outright tell you where the gutter is. It's a fun little stage, but I actually have a problem with this one. There's an uphill climb right before the pins, so by the time I reach them, I've slowed down too much and can't get a strike or a spare. Maybe there's a way around this, but I haven't figured it out. One of the most annoying things about this game is how some pins don't go down until after your score is taken. Then in the next round, you have to knock those pins down again. It can be really frustrating, almost like the pins are mocking you. Next up, we have Tokyo. This is actually one of the most creative maps in the game. You're rolling down the streets at night and trying to avoid traffic. You go across tunnels and hills to reach the pins. If you hit a car, you get sent flying. It's really fun and one of my favorite stages to play. I like to try and land the ball in the tunnel after the pins at the very end. Then we have High Seas, another one of my favorites. This time, you're on a rocking ship in a storm and you have to roll across the deck to reach the pins. 
The ship is supposed to resemble the USS Constitution, a famous US warship. This stage has a lot of detail, even including a splash sound effect if one of the pins rolls over the edge. However, not all of the details are necessary. Before you reach the pins, the ball jumps for some reason. I'm sure it's to signify the ride is getting bumpy, but no other part of the stage does that. Also, you can fall below deck, but this obstacle is literally impossible to hit if you're actually trying. You have to go out of your way to fall into it. I gotta admit, I appreciate how they took the time to animate a whole room beneath the deck. Maybe it's worth falling in just to see it. Oddly enough, this stage is labeled as Expert Mode, which is surprising to me. This is probably the easiest level in the game, and I've had a far better record with it than with San Francisco or Pins of Rome. Next up is Yosemite. Gotta be honest, this stage is boring. There's really nothing to it apart from a little river you can jump over. It's mostly just the classic stage with a different setting. I kinda wish they made the forest more detailed and not just a series of endless trees. Oh well, it's still nostalgic. Last up for the classic stages is Pins of Rome. This stage was pretty much the selling point of the game. Almost all media showcasing Hyperbole uses this level in its advertising. While it is an interesting stage, I think I personally prefer High Seas in Tokyo. I like that you can knock the urns over, but it kind of wastes your time limit. Also, the flowers launch you into the sky. This stage is actually really hard, if not the most challenging in the game. You have to take it slow because if you move too fast, you fall over the edge. There's a lot to bump into, and you have to keep the ball relatively straight the whole time. That does it for the classic stages. Overall, they're pretty nice, but they do leave you wanting more. Luckily, in this newest edition of Hyper Bowl, there is more. To access the newer stages, you roll on over to the right and go down a lane into a whole new zone. These stages aren't part of the original game, so let's just run over them quickly. The palm tree zone is nice because it looks like it's straight out of a Sonic the Hedgehog game. You go across bridges and little platforms, but it's kind of hard to keep yourself from falling over the side. I actually have a really hard time with this one. The stage only gives you just enough time to reach the pins, and if you have even the shortest delay, you won't make it. Next up, we have a white void. Just kidding, it's a snowy hill. This level is pretty interesting, and a nice little addition to our arsenal of stages. Like with the palm tree stage, it's pretty difficult. I can land on the pins just fine, but I have a hard time getting on most of the poles that slide you into them. Hard, but fun. It reminds me of those old snowboarding games I used to play on Wild Tangent. Then we have the Mushroom Stage, which looks like one of those dream stages from TAC 2 The Staff of Dreams. How's that for nostalgia? Then there's the Campfire Stage, which is aesthetically pleasing if you like the campout setting. Finally, we have this... unusual level. There are these big orange machines and blue holographic things that launch you when you roll into them. I'm not sure what these are supposed to represent, but this stage is mostly fun if you just want to launch your ball all over the place. And that concludes Hyper Bowl. While there are many bowling games that have come out over the years, this one holds a special place in my heart. It's nice to see such a simple take on the concept of bowling with classic arcade-styled graphics to put you in that early 2000s feel. Please do what you can to support the current developers. It's very rare that any effort is made to keep games like this alive, especially while retaining their original format. It's incredible what Technicat is doing, and they deserve all the love in the world for keeping Hyper Bowl's flame going. I've included links to both the game's Steam page and itch.io page in the description below. Go give it a try for yourself. We can all use a little trip back in time. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next memory.